and welcome to the 90 Minute Cynic. This is our first free podcast of uh, the new season. Welcome back. Uh, a lot of you might have already been listening to us on Patreon. Get in there, subscribe. It's uh, www.patreon.com slash 90 Minute Cynic for all your Celtic content needs. Um, you might have also noticed a new theme tune there. Uh, the Cherry Wave, absolutely fantastic Scottish band. Give them a wee check on Twitter. Download their stuff, the SoundCloud, all that chat. They do the theme tune for the Patreon podcast and the theme for our a stand-up podcast. Thank you very much, Cherry Wave. Outstanding work. Louie, how are you doing? Ah, it's all right. Ah, no not bad, bad. not bad. It's been a... Um, Sporting a wee tan there, Louie? Ah, I've, I've been my holidays during the off-season and enjoyed myself. And it's good to be here with the rest of Christian and Gal's Patreon rejects. <laughs> Uh, is, that the, is that what we should call this podcast? What, it's pretty much what we are, isn't it? <laughs> no one's going to be listening, we can see what we want. Lovely. Kian, Kian Haran. Good evening. How are you doing? Yeah, good. good summer. Well, I'm uh, stuck working. I'm like Mr. Like McCaffrey, my wife here, who's just a man of leisure for six, seven weeks. But, aye. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, to my right, we've got Stuart Duggan. Stuart, welcome. Hello, it's nice to be here with the B team on the non-Patreon trips. <laughs> on the development squad. The development squad, yeah. Hey, is this your is this your debut, Stuart? You've been... Uh, this is my free podcast debut, but I was actually A team on the Patreon last week, so I've done myself a disservice there. But I feel like, uh, you know, coming and doing podcasts with 90 Minute Cynics, you really have to earn your stripes on the free pod, so I'm looking forward to having a go you've clearly been on the Patreon you're much better dressed than the rest of us <laughs> that's true you can see it he's wearing it he's wearing that Patreon money um, welcome aboard Stuart uh, just you know disappointing you've, you went in at the first team you're now you've been relegated it's fine don't worry about it um, it's been a good performance tonight I'm sure you'll be right back up there so uh, let's get right into it um, we've also only had one competitive game but I wanted to kind of check in how we how we feel we've been doing during the close season um, first of all transfers uh, we've had uh, Christopher Julian coming in Bolly Bolingoli uh, Luca Connell um, and I've also in a rundown I've put them back it's Gutman and Pires and Shred because they signed before but they feel like new signings Louise well, took the mic Louise well, ready to go I don't have a clue who any of those guys are <laughs> Not, not a single one Honestly that's what this podcast is um, all about Yeah I, 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 saw, I, I saw a wee bit of um, the, the game in Sarajevo um, And I, so I saw a wee bit of Bolly Bolingoli Is that his name? Yep um, And from what I saw like It was only a snapshot But what I saw I thought, I thought he looked good I, 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 I thought he looked very competent and kind of in the same attacking areas as what you would expect Tierney to be so he he looked as if he could hopefully do a similar job Um, but yeah the transfers I think are a wee bit frustrating right now Um, I feel as if we've done some good business with the likes of Big Julian but again don't know anything about him but I'm hoping that he's going to be good Um, but clearly there's a few positions and namely right back where we don't have any players so it's a bit of a worry I know Neil Lennon's obviously alluded to the fact they're trying to get two but still don't have even one so frustrating Kieran what do you think about our, our transfers in so far what do you make of them? Um, well I mean we've got we've got players and positions that were kind of required we did need a back up to Tierney um, whether or not it now transforms that Bollingoli might be our number one if Tierney kind of goes on with obviously what's been happening the last week or two uh, we've got, uh, we got a centre half now it seems to be quite a big command in the centre half I've not really seen much of him does come with a bit of a, with a price tag so there's going to be the pressure on him the fact of he should be really a really talented player Um I think it might actually work well with the, if he's if he's um, talented and experienced sitting next to Ayer because we've always said we've always cried out that Ayer next to an experienced defender might make him take him that extra step to kind of being better. Um, so with uh, the two of them together, hopefully um, that would work out. Look at Connor, I've not really seen much. I think he's a hold midfielder. Am I right in saying that? He can play like 
left side up and down. Right. So, um, no, I've not been. I've not seen much of him either. But I mean, it is it is still quite early in the, season, in the summer anyway. So we've still got a lot of time to go. So we're, it's probably better taking our time to get the right players instead of just rushing to grab somebody because we need them and um, to try and squeeze them in. Um, he has alluded to the fact that he's going to bring in a couple of right backs that he seems to have spotted. But uh, weirdly enough, it seems if he needed he needed to get through this round to be then be able to go and get them, as if to say that there's no money involved. Well, there's a little bit of money involved in the first and uh, the qualifiers as you go through. So as if as if we go through a stage, we get another player and another players. Which I don't know why we have to do that or whether we can just get them in as soon as we can. I think Lennon kind of alluded that to the. At the press conference today as well, just with other teams aren't all back and they're still in their pre-season essentially. So it's just the, the practicalities of that. We can't always sign players that if we might want just because other clubs are doing other things right now. Um, Stuart, what have you thought of what you've seen in the, in your players so far? Uh, again, uh, only really <coughs> seen the Sarajevo game. Ball and Golly did look competent. Uh, picked up a wee injury, but as I believe going to be fit to play tomorrow uh, didn't see Julian at the weekend but I've had heard good things also bizarrely got um, a message from a, a French kitchen porter that I worked with like six years ago and haven't heard from and he messaged me on Instagram like mate just so you know that Christophe Julien's a player by the way I was like who are you, who are you? I was like fuck oh, shit I was like oh that's good well that's a, a real stamp of approval uh, I think that the club have done well in terms of stripping out some of the dead weight from the squad I think that's been important Marvin Comper RIP um, and I think that there is obvious positions that require strengthening right back being the obvious one uh, it looked quite heartening that they were getting their business done quite early and understand that these things do take time it is just a, as you say a wee bit frustrating to not have someone in because even going into a game like tomorrow night where the tie's essentially done you're still like well do we play Ralston can we even play in a back four or do we have to play in a formation that maybe the players aren't that comfortable in or you're going to play Ayer out of position just because you fundamentally don't have anyone uh, and obviously Ralston's not being considered as, as as the man for the job so we'll see um, still a lot of time to go though obviously and you know that they, there is money there to spend and I think that obviously breaking uh, sorry spending as much as they did on Julian is a positive sign and even spending like whether it was three, three and a half on ball and goal is quite a, a reasonable indicator that they're willing to spend money. They're not trying to get stuff done on loan deals or cut price deals as well. So, And um, there's a, a lot there. Uh, we'll talk certainly more about right back in a wee moment, but um, surely... I'll even say the line if you want. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Tease you. Um, but Stuart mentioned about getting rid well, I don't know if you said getting rid of a lot of dead wood, but I'm going to say it. Dead weight. Uh, dead weight, there we go. Um, but transfers out, we've had Gamboa, Comper, Boyata, Lustig, Scott Allen, Eze, Malumbu, De Vries, um, and then we've had a few loans ending, Benkovic, Toljan, and Burke. Um, do you think that's something the squad's needed? Do we need to do more? Is there more fat that needs trimmed? Uh, I think I think it's great that we've we've managed to finally do that, and I, because it's been it's been a long time coming. I think there's probably for the last few transfer windows, we've had players there that are picking up a wage that are not offering anything. We should have we should have moved them on, but again, it's not always easy because they have contracts and you know they're pish, so no one wants to buy them. Um, but no, I think it's been good. One one thing I would say though is we. I can't remember if the last podcast, the kind of last couple of podcasts at the end of the season, did we know that Lennon obviously got it on the cup final day? They actually got the job. I can't remember. We probably obviously speculated about him probably getting the job. But after having a wee while to kind of think about it and kind of come to terms with it as such, I actually think Neil Lennon has been brilliant since since they came back I think he's been really good in press conferences I think he's been really good um, in terms of some of the stuff he's said but also the fact of getting these players out getting a couple I, I definitely think Lennon deserves quite a bit of credit already for the way he's kind of handled his business I've, I've been really impressed and to be honest it's probably got me pretty on side 
to be honest. I think he's backed up the club really well, and like his come the, the the kind of the stance today and the the, the press conference today. Um, talking about Tierney, talking up the club, and you know when when we're getting kind of direct derisory offers for our best player, um, I think he's been brilliant so far, and I'm really hoping that obviously it's not about how he talks in the media, it's how he you know how the team plays in the pitch. But from a Neil Lennon point of view, I am I'm on the the bus, the bike, the plane, whatever it is, the transport. Yeah, I would actually agree with that, uh, and I think that. Coming out of the season, it felt like there was a real, almost self-imposed air of chaos where you have Lol doing the press conference about offering the job in the shower and stuff, and uh, yeah, it just all felt a wee bit like people were going a bit crazy and not very happy with Lennon coming in. But it seems like there's a bit of stability. He's saying all the right things as regards to how he wants the team to play. Uh, they showed a bit of character and the fact that they went behind against Sarajevo they didn't panic, they just kind of got on with their business they turned the game round uh, and yeah, I think that it it does, I mean you can't really go too much on pre-season but, you know, Vilas Boa that everyone wanted to come in um, you know, they got they got pumped the other day, didn't they? Cause he went, was it Marseille he went to? Yeah, yeah got pumped uh, and the amount of money that Benitez is obviously going for uh, Lennon might well be, you know, the best choice that was available, and it's quite a positive start, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> I can't agree with that as well, but I think the performances haven't been there yet. The thing as well is we haven't really been tested in pre-season. We we're playing teams I'd never really heard of. I know obviously it's quite early, so all the big teams are actually probably we at still on their holidays, so we probably couldn't get them. But um, and then obviously with the game on Saturday, and from what. I kind of gather and reports and stuff we didn't play very well so we, we started I know we started off quite badly with Sarajevo and we kind of got the game turned around the performance was okay I did think it was a great performance but just now I just don't know if the performances are starting to turn up yet so I know I've seen the good things and all that are off the field but on the field it's not shown yet so Wednesday could be a really good indicator of that because we're at home, it's Parkhead, it's going to be a, dry, a nice dry night compared to what it was in Sarajevo. Um, the kind of pressure's off because we do have a two-goal advantage, three-goal away, away um, goals. So the kind of shackles off a little bit, so we should be able to see the players playing a lot better, playing without any fear and see if they can actually bring up performances. So I think maybe after that after that game, it might be more of a kind of better footing to see how it's going to kind of go on the pitch with them. Main thing I like about Lennon is he's not a rat, and is also it? that there's been so many rats infesting the club recently. He's the man to get them dealt with. He is. Look Rat at the way he's dealing with and Cham. He's no standing for any shit. I'm, I'm all aboard. I'm all aboard. Yeah, I, I th- certainly think what Kieran was saying that the performances haven't been inspiring, but it is it's pre-season still. I know we beat Pinkerfield. Come on, what, what more do you want? What more could we ask? What a result. Outstanding. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, the right backs, which I'm sure Lewis gets something to, to say. I've also got a, a wee question from Twitter, if I can find it. That's a sheet of paper, but it is. It's, what I've done is I've written down questions and printed them off and haven't even actually included the question that I wanted to ask. Um, Just make it up. Yeah. Uh, Basically, the question was, should we have let uh, Lustig go without getting a right-back in? Where the hell is it? I'll find out who asked us that, but yeah. Did we, were we too too quick to let Lustig go? Nope. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I say no. I think Lustig's time was up. The man was trying to con us. He wanted to try and get a three-year contract out of us. Does he think we are idiots? That was never going to happen. Um, it's negotiations. No. Not the deal, we? He goes three, we go one, we end up at two. We didn't end up at two. No. <laughs> he just wanted a three year deal and that wasn't going to happen. No, it was time, amazing servant, brilliant servant to the club, but it was time for him to go. Um, that's not the problem. The problem is we haven't brought, brought in a replacement. I, you know, and I don't think we should have just been kind of. It wouldn't have been fair to kind of mess him about either and, and hold him back from potentially getting a move. Obviously, he's away in Belgium now, and 
you know, good uh, all the best to him, good luck to him. But we can't we can't mess him about and keep him here until we had someone else because look at us, we're almost in the second qualifying, we've still not got someone, and it's obviously proven to be very difficult. But then that's again another thing that's. I think it's been really positive about Neil Lennon so far because clearly behind the scenes they're taking their time to get it right and he's, he said that I think he said um, was it the weekend he'd said that um, last week they were in a four hour uh, recruitment meeting um, discussing two positions so clearly they're, they're taking their time over it they're trying to get it right and I, I trust Neil Lennon I don't think I don't think we're going to get a kind of Marvin Comper situation out of any right backs. I think he understands how serious it is because we actually don't have any other than Ralston. Clearly, doesn't favour him. So I think it's it's clear that he's taking the time. They're doing their due del- do due diligence. Yep. Um, and we'll find out more about that meeting a couple of months time when they release yeah, the minutes. Someone will nick the paper, won't they? <laughs> Poor cleaner. A uh, Kieran, did you agree with Jamie sixty seven? Um, no, no, I would have. I know, obviously, if Lustig is holding out for a three year deal and he wants three year or nothing, then we're not going to help to ransom. Um, going kind of middle ground, giving him a two years, I think would have been hopefully been offered. Um, but you can't be held to ransom by a player that realistically you're going to see as a squad player, not actually be as number one. If he's been, if he was going to still be. Good form and good condition, and not clear you would give them the three years, but um, it's just unfortunate that we've, we've obviously never had a real backup right back anyway when he was there, so we are in a situation where we do need two right backs. But we do, we do have a, a couple of weeks now, well, when I say that, we'll, we'll go until next week before the Estonian game, but I can't imagine you could get in, they bring them in straight away. So it's whether he now, because he started with a back three in Sarajevo, but quickly quite changed it. And then had to put Ayat right back. Um, I mean, you know, I suppose you never you can always say you could always use Forrest as a right back if you still wanted to have that back too, and not put Ayat out, out at right back because obviously it looks very uncomfortable there. Um, but then obviously you're losing kind of the the attacking progress of Forrest. So, but then you can't do you stay stay with a back three and try and force it and make it happen. I don't know, which it depends on how he sees how he sees the rest of the season does he plan on playing a back three for the season this time because um, he has talked about there might be another potential another striker come in I mean but we have three as it is so if you then have a full striker and you technically don't only play one up top then you're kind of having you've got too many so I don't know if it's kind of really looking towards he might play a back three with two up front um, going that way um, but it was unfortunate to lose Lustig. He's been a he's been a great player for us. Um, he's loved his time being there. The fans got right behind him. I seen that as well on Saturday. They had a kind of a goodbye message to him, which was really nice coming from the Green Brigade. Um, so, yeah, I think that the I I completely agree that Lustig was a great servant for the club. But I think when you don't have a right back, it's very easy. Um, to be very have some very rose tinted glasses uh, and it was very easy for revisionist history to, to creep in because he everyone you know most of last season was crying out saying he wasn't good enough and he shouldn't be the first first choice right back and I think if you keep him around maybe there's the temptation that that that, that is just it that he just becomes your, your first choice right back and I thought that Lennon's comments today were quite interesting because it seemed that it was a problem they, they knew they needed to bring in a right back but they were talking about him as if like I mean you, he was the best right back in the world and you couldn't possibly replace someone that had his credentials I was like well his best credential currently was that he could play right back and that's not something that we have so that is yes in that regard it was great having him but I think that his time was was coming to an end at the club uh, and it's maybe better for him to go with everyone's best wishes than have people week in week out saying oh Lustig's shite Lustig's shite got to get rid of him or if you progress in the Champions League it's quite evident that he's not really at that level anymore so it's better business and like you said it's, it's quite shrewd from Lennon perhaps you could let sentiment creep in and just keep someone like that because 
well for one he's a great laugh and it'd be good to have him around for the 10 and stuff like that but it's a business as well and it's not best for business having someone that's not good enough playing week in week out as long as it applies that to Scott Brown because <laughs> when you're talking about sentiment I was going to say I suppose a bit of sentiment coming with Izzy and the fact that we brought him back because obviously we knew what he could do he went away he came back and then you can tell what he used to be able to do he nah, do when he came back. Nah, I, mean, I, I always remember that Hibs game when we, they lost in the counter and you looked at the picture of the goal and he was at the halfway line and couldn't still couldn't get past and I just when I seen that I was like nah enough for him you're talking about rats at the club will you keep on talking about Scott Brown like that and you'll get smashed you wee rats they <laughs> <laughs> um, back to right backs um, Lustig uh, actually on the best of the best podcast which was released on Sunday on Patreon so you want to find out if he made it into the team 2000s onwards best players Lustig is a contender certainly ah, I've got my badge now I'll unsubscribe <laughs> you bastard <laughs> um, Stuart had mentioned the comments from uh, Lennon on the right back so we'll actually just give them a wee play and you can let me know what you think about them Louis and Kieran identifying the right one making sure we get all our eggs in a row with it and at the right price as well obviously some we've got priced out of or we felt it was too much money for some players and you know again there's it's no panic but ideally you know if we make it through this round we would like to bring one or two more players in for the second round if we do that so uh, Neil Lennon 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 looking to get say, A wee right back in Possibly um, Once two apparently about Once two Two, two That's what they're saying um, Stuart you had a couple of points You wanted to raise Well I would like to walk back What I said about feeling Like Lennon's a safe pair of hands If he's going to use an analogy Like getting all his eggs in a row Because That's where we've been going wrong That's where we've been going wrong Think about it logistically How difficult that would be They'd be rolling all over the place Potentially breaking I'm, I'm worried now I'm actually worried For the season ahead Really? Do I just get it over me And say it? No <laughs> You little tease um, <coughs> Yeah wanting to Wanting to Kind of worries me Because one of them Has got to be a shiter Like you know well, that we, we basically We need One to. of them's probably As Donald. you've said And I think we all Agree Anthony Ralston Fair play to the boy um, I hope he does well with his career but the fact that Lennon played higher shows us that Ralston isn't really in his thoughts for and to be fair it. I like Lennon saying that he wants to and yeah. that also shows that I mean, but it can get, it's perfectly possible for him to get two decent right backs and have them fight over the position or one that is maybe better but one that's younger and is going to grow and become better or Steve Nadal yeah but well, I don't know I think he started higher as right back I think he tried to play the back three first with Whit Forrest as the, wing, the right wing back and it never worked so that's why I had to kind of change it because I, I, I imagine that if he was going to play two centre-halves at the back because Bitton was in there as well so um, it looked like it was going to be three or you'd like to think he could at least play Ralston right back um, to start with but because obviously once you've changed the, the formation you can't really make substitutions it's a waste of a sub so it is my, my, only, my only thought in that <laughs> The kind of where we are just now in, in terms of like the recruitment and trying to find the right the, the, this kind of mystery perfect right back is um, I think maybe they've seen the potential of the two teams now obviously we know now that it's the Estonian team that we're going to be playing in the second qualifier round, qualifying round but I think they looked at the, op- the, the level of the opposition that we could have got and I think they, they, they probably feel more comfortable that we've got a wee bit more time do you know what I mean? I, I, I think they probably are targeting in, in their heads. They really need to get someone for the third qualifying round, and that's the that's the point I think because the, you've got the third qualifying round and you've also got the league starting. I mean, we can't start the league campaign without a recognised right back in the squad. And my only gripe with it so far, like I'm glad that they're taking their time to get the right person. I think that's great. But only gripe with it is the fact that. One, they must have had a list of targets drawn up ages ago, like way before, because the ball and golly is not a Lennon signing, Julian's not a Lennon signing, Luke O'Connell, maybe, but I still don't think he's a Lennon signing, and Schved certainly came solely from the club and the recruitment team, so Lennon isn't actually making the signings, these are all players that have been identified, okay, he might have, he might have kind of said yes to the deals, but clearly it's the club and the recruitment team, the people behind the scenes that are, that are going out, scouting 
putting players and then trying to put deals in place, which is fantastic because that's the thing that I think we were all concerned just wasn't happening for a period of time. Well, it looks like it is. But then it slowed up. And my gripe with it is that we have paid maybe, what is it, between six and a half, seven million for Julian, a centre half. Fantastic, that's brilliant. We've paid 3.5 for Ball and Goalie. Brilliant. But we should be paying, we should be happy, or at least willing to pay four, five, six million pounds to get a right back. Because we know how important that is to the to the balance of the team. So if we've got the money there, which we obviously have an insane amount of money, I mean we we got if I don't know what we've got in the bank now, like 40, 50 million. But even if you just look at the fact that the belly went for twenty and Rogers went for nine, then you know you've got almost 30, 30 million pounds there. Surely we can go out and spend five million on a right back and get someone of a really good quality in. I'm hopeful that that's perhaps what's going to happen and the money that was spent on Edward for example that was at a time when we needed well we had he was on loan wasn't he and then we, we did the deal properly so you have a player of that quality that's how much they cost so the club were like well yeah and they know that they can when Edward's time comes to leave that they could probably sell him for 15, 20, 25 million if he performs as well as he can if you look at the squad this season and positions that you would still be looking for them to fill I don't think, as you sort of alluded to, Kieran, we don't necessarily need another striker. If Griffiths is there and if Bio's there, you've kind of got strikers. There's a lot of really exciting young players. We've got wingers coming out of our arse. You've kind of got a lot of central midfielders. So the real position that you need filled is right back. So surely most of the budget, or as you were saying, like six, seven million. If you need that and you want someone that can be there for a few years, which is, again, something that Lennon said then you should be willing to spend that sort of money and I'm hopeful that perhaps that's what they're doing we talked about it a little bit on uh, one of the Patreon pods last week about Tommy Smith the guy, the, the Huddersfield player that was going to come in and the price was getting forced up it was 4 or 5 million I was like, was well, that really, that's quite a lot of money to spend on a, a player that played for Huddersfield and had this terrible defensive record so perhaps they are looking to do that and I would hope that they would and that it's with a view to getting someone of a real quality in because that's there isn't anywhere else that needs that level of investment in the squad I think I suppose an indication of maybe how much we're going to spend is we spent 3.5 on Ball and Golly now at the moment you're looking at he's backup so if you're willing to pay 3.5 million on a backup left back then you look you should be in a 7 million pound on a centre half potentially um, first 11 your right back could be anything between 5 and 7 million pound as well or Ball and Golly has been brought in as a replacement for Tierney at three and a half so you can look at it either way and uh, oh, I've totally forgot what I was going to say now god damn it well whilst you remember I think oh that's what I was going to say um, you bastard <laughs> um, the, the, the frustrating thing I find with Celtic sometimes is the fact that like we've always been pretty frugal we've always been pretty tight right but the time the, the times when we have speculated to accumulate and we've splashed it a wee bit we've been rewarded we got Rogers in paid more money than we've ever sorry rat that's this Rogers I know, speaking about I know um, we, you know we gave him more money than probably any Celtic managers ever had and we did get the, the benefits of it I mean from even from just a business point of view the club earned way more money in the time that he was a manager and then instead of maintaining that level we go to Lennon now I'm over that whole thing for now. Um, we also seen it with Edward when you know we paid nine million for him, and there's no way that he's not going to go for more than that. And then Cham, four point five million, he'll he'll go for at least double that, even though his performances haven't been that great. So clearly, we've we've shown ourselves that we can, you know, if we spend, if we're willing to spend a wee bit, we'll be rewarded for it. If we get it, obviously the right player and players are different, but um, it just frustrates me but sometimes especially when when the right back position is so key that we seem to be you know but it's maybe to be fair to to, to caveat, caveat my own point we're only picking up on who we've been linked with in the, med- like, in the media and all that sort of thing I don't really think they really saw like the Julian transfer coming 
but we seem to have been constantly linked with that Tommy Smith for Huddersfield and these types of players who we probably don't want to sign I wonder if that's just partly because they were on that leaked document and also because they're easy targets but that's maybe not necessarily who the club's going for I just want them to spend some money about Absolutely, that's what I was going to say I agree in so much as we all know right back is the weakest position in the team so drop some money on it spend five, six, seven million on a quality right back and then all of a sudden the, the, the entire strength of the team goes up dramatically because the weakest part of the team is that much stronger the only thing is when, you, when you're starting to pay bigger money for players you lose the, the longevity of it because if you pay a bit more for a player they come in they are they're a quality player who then improves on that season you could end up losing them after the next season in the summer like we did with Dembele okay we had just about two years out of Dembele um, and Cham well maybe going to be about a year or two so we've only kind of got a kind of lifespan of a player is about a year or two so then every second summer we're having it you can almost rebuild teams and it's just you're kind of losing the kind, kind of momentum and kind of like the kind of the togetherness of the team because you're having to start again I know but I suppose that's like saying you want someone to come in and do well but not that well and so that they'll go so if you have players like Dembele where like he's a he's a real genuine talent and he's shown that not only what he did with us but what he's done when he's gone to France and you see him linked with clubs like Manchester United and stuff like that he was like a, a real real talent I'm not sure if that's necessarily I don't think Celtic are looking to find the next best right back in Europe um, but they probably do still want to keep to the model of buying in, and Cham's quite a good example of a player that's young, that's got a lot of potential, that 4.5 million is um, is a very sound investment because when he goes it'll be for, for more than that uh, but the other thing as well if you're talking about small life cycles I think most Celtic fans and I'm pretty sure most people at, at the club it's a real two year cycle now and after the 10 whatever happens happens but that's the, that's the milestone and everything is geared towards that surely I would think yeah absolutely and, um the, the point I was, I was going to make as well was the fact that like right now as far as I'm concerned we can't win that league because you can't win the league without a right back when we play a back four because look at the look at the, the mess we got up, you know not mess but if you're going to play up until this point right now because you can't count Julian because Julian because he's not played so right now Aya is our best centre half you've played your best centre half out of position because you don't have a right back yeah. right now as things stand we cannot win that league so until they get someone in of a good enough quality we don't stand a chance overall and that that's how urgent I think it, it has to be And but I think Lennon gets that yeah and I think when you're, I mean you say that but at the same time if we had a right back that's it I think there's other purchases we need to make but I think our team by a long margin is the strongest team in the league in our first 11 we're right back Louis's not happy with it I'm not so convinced Louis Rangers fan Louis that's your that's your name I know I'd, I know I've I'd, 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 I kind of done it a wee bit last year but I'm going to be honest because this is my opinion and that's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm on you know the the B team's podcast <laughs> um, I but I know um, I do actually think that I again have liked the way Rangers have went about their summer business they've at least they've got target. funnels of people really quickly but the quality of those people isn't necessarily yep. that high I, well, uh, yeah and I, I I can't I can't judge the quality of them I don't I, again just like Celtic signs I don't know them all yet I've not seen any of them play but just from the point of view that they've clearly they've got a more settled structure behind the scenes they've identified who, they've, who, who they've wanted and they've went out and they've got them but as Neil Lennon was kind of talking about today, it's difficult because teams haven't come back yet and all that sort of thing. So maybe it is just clearly a case of we are targeting a higher calibre of player, which is which is fair enough and, and great. But I do think, I think you would be very naive to think that Rangers haven't improved their squad. 
I think they'd improved it last year and I think they've improved it again this year and we cannot look at them with, we're only two away from doing the 10 we cannot look at them and think ah it's fine they're shite like, you can, I just don't think you can go with that mindset you've got to think they're going to be so strong and so determined that they're really going to push us and we need to make sure that we are as the best Celtic that we can be for going into this new season that's why I'm just worried that we're not quite there yet I think the main thing to consider as regards them is that if you are being honest, then the actual when Morelos was suspended for whatever fucking indefinitely at the end of the season, and they changed the way they played, and they were like comfortably a better team in the second Ibrox game. Uh, they were playing better. They they are playing better. I don't necessarily. I kind of agree with you about me, but that they've got a lot of players in and they've done it quickly but that's not an indication of quality from what I hear that a Rebo boy is supposed to be pretty good and I think that that's something they lacked I do think it's quite funny that they spent loads of money on a centre half who name checked Henrik Larsson almost immediately and I think that our new big centre half is better than their new big centre half but I agree that a strong Celtic is what's required and we should be looking after ourselves first and making sure that uh, our business is done properly that we're you know, in the, the strongest position that we can be in but I would agree I think it's going to be a much closer season in terms of quality I know that Celtic uh, I'm sure a lot of people would, would concede that it, they weren't at their best last season certainly in comparison to the first two trebles uh, but yeah I think it will be will be closer because they are investing and they have to because it's quite it's never been more important to compete so, I think as well the fact of because like Louis says they're getting their players in now they're now going to start to gel more they're now they've, I think Gerard said I think that maybe that was his last purchase I think so that's him now settled he's got his squad so now for the next couple of weeks through pre-season he's just going to get them now working the way he wants them to do it and they're kind of got a head start on us because they've got two or three weeks left of the pre-season to do that which will help them kind of hit the start of the season running whereas we, we don't want, we want to kind of be t- ready as well because we don't want to have a, a poor start to the season and have to be chasing their tails because I think there's more pressure chasing Rangers at the top of the league than there is chasing Hearts or Aberdeen because if it's Hearts or Aberdeen there's always the kind of mindset well they can't last the pace of the season they'll not keep it consistency going whereas with Rangers we know they have the potential of having Consistency because they've, they've lacked it, and that was the biggest thing they missed last season was putting runs together. They were kind of two, kind of stop start. They would win a game, then they would lose one, maybe win two, and lose one, especially towards the start of the season. But I think in the, in the, uh, the split, and they literally almost won all their games and a couple before that. So they, they as the, the close season came in, they kind of started to work well, like you said yourself, because Morelos was out and they kind of adapted a bit better. Um, so if they start the season with that and they keep it going then I think there's a lot more pressure on us having to chase to catch them um, and we, we don't want to kind of fall too far behind I think the fixtures are starting are a wee bit kind of kinder towards us anyway so that might help us as well but um, you kind of want to it's a, it's a fine margin you want to get your business done quite quickly but you also want to get the quality in as well so it's just trying to kind of put the two things together I mean I think that they are going to probably pose a, a bigger challenge than they did last season but I also think that irrespective of well, I mean in general you know we should be focused on Celtic and, and and us being as good as we can be but in general I think there's lots of problems with Gerrard and the way that he does things and the way that he throws players under the bus and all these players that he's brought in perhaps they're not going to take well to that and they might, or the loanies in the same way that they had last season where if they come out and it's like oh these players aren't good enough to play for Rangers and blah 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 they'll just be like fuck this I'm going back to Liverpool or whatever I don't need to do this you know yeah. I'm going to get a bigger move somewhere anyway and they've got a huge squad in terms of numbers um, which, which they obviously need, they need to cut out but it's brilliant because they're obviously going for it as they have done the last couple of transfer windows they're signing they're, they're sp- I mean spending what four million on that big centre half Um that surely is the most amount of money they've spent on a player in a long, long yes, time and, and wages. Yeah, I was going to say a big squad will have wages. To be fair, I don't think he'd actually spent 
any or very little money up until that four million. All the products oh, really? coming in were either free or very very cheap. But, yeah, uh, but still, but, but but the fact is they're, they're clearly going for it. Admin um, two's on its way. Eh? Admin two's on its way. But 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 do you know what I want to happen? I want to win the ten, right? And then I want them to win the next one. No, ah, <laughs> no, were, no, no, no. Ah, you were close. The 10. You were close, but you. Nah, he died stop with ten. That will that will kill them. I I would just prefer they actually died again though. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd like it as well. But and then on, eleven and twelve and thirteen. I'm saying I'm saying all this. I'm I'm really looking forward to the season. I wish your season was starting this weekend. I can't wait for it to start because I think it. I genuinely think it will be a, a cracking race this year. Um, and that's what we want. We've, we've said it before. We can't, you know, we can't talk about you know a lack of competition. Then we finally get some and shite it. Like I'm looking forward to it, and I, I think it'll be brilliant. But I just hope it kind of motivates Celtic rather than them just dismissing it. I want, I want to see them hopefully put together a squad. Like, and it's in everybody's best interest. Peter Law, his whole legacy could be built on 10 in a row if he is the man because I think there's a bit of speculation that he might go after that I mean if he gets 10 in a row as, as you know then he's kind of accomplished everything that could possibly be accomplished pretty much um, so why wouldn't you just spend a bit to make sure you get it you know well, this is it this is it um, talking about bringing in players early um, Turnbull <laughs> I know that's maybe a wee while ago now, but we've not talked about it on this pod yet. So I want to get your your feelings on that. Did we, the Celtic, make mistakes? Were Celtic all right? Were Motherwell fannies? Not just I, saying that's my opinion. But I, first of all, I think yeah, Motherwell were the ones that done it first. Celtic were kind of forced a little bit with that with a statement because Motherwell peed their pants and they just went like that. Went out there and afraid they went. Oh, we're getting three and a half million pounds for a player. Oh my God, look at all this money! And then they put it because. Whenever, players, whenever those transfers, it's always speculations through the media or players going for this and players going for that. I mean, when a club actually tweets it officially that they've accepted this bid, it's, that's kind of different. You don't see that very often with clubs. So then all of a sudden, say to like that, right, OK, well, you've accepted the bid, but we've still talked to the player now. And then as they start talking to the player, the player starts playing funny buggers and, he starts, and his agent's getting involved saying, well, do you know what? We could probably get more money down south. So now it looks like... Um, it looks kind of bad and so it was it was the dirty laundry was getting aired public but I don't really feel Celtic were a lot to blame they, they, they were forced to they had to kind of get a wee bit involved they would never have wanted to do that publicly but because of Motherwell what they did they, they, they triggered it and started it I thought it was quite unfortunate the way it played out and I kind of agree with you that you know uh, airing the dirty laundry and all that it's not, it's not the way you want to kind of conduct yourself the only thing that I think is regrettable was the tweet. I thought that was an absolute beamer. Yeah, um, it was farcical. We move on. It's like, what? what? What's going on? Like we're talking about. But the whole the whole situation is just really unfortunate. It's like a total freak injury. Uh, I think the guy's agent was at it. He's just a young boy. I think that he would have been absolutely welcomed with open arms uh, if the deal had got across the line, if he hadn't found that injury. I think the... I don't think that the player was the one causing trouble in that situation. I think it was probably the agent. I suspect that we probably will get him in January, and if not January, then maybe next season. And I also think it's interesting that if that had gone through, and then we're talking about Turnbull on top of Bolingoli and Julian, the transfer business starts to take a slightly different shape, where yeah. we're also spending money, we're getting young quality players in, uh, and that we're doing it you know, the way that we would all want to be done and then you should be like, oh, once we get a right back, we're fine. Because so clearly, clearly there's a central midfielder that we need to get. Well, that's obviously something that they, they, they've got their eye on and whether or not, if in Cham leaves, if that's how this situation with him is going to be resolved with him moving on, then you have to replace him because you can't go into the season with the squad being weaker than it was. And if you've got rid of even just... Uh, in Cham could has the quality to be a, a starter week in week out and if you get rid of someone of that quality you have to replace them so yeah uh, and I think that perhaps that would have been the role that Turnbull would have been in to play but I think when Cham I think I think it's more he's just spitting a dummy because he's not getting a game because I know obviously he's an injury but then at a point towards the middle of the season like Brown, McGregor and Christie were working so well together that it was hard for Encham to get in that position um, and I think he just 
he just kind of spat at me and thought, well, I'm just going to say this because I kind of want to get out of here. So he's going to try to force, it, force Celtic into a bit of a move. Um, but, I mean, he has got the talent to be there, but I mean, Christy McGregor, until, unfortunately, Christy obviously getting that smashed to the face that put him out for the, the end of the season. I mean, up to that point, I thought he was fantastic, and it was hard for MD, even when even Tam couldn't get in the team because Christy was performing so well with those three midfields. So, um, I think if Vivian Cham does go, you're, you're, not, you're kind of looking for a, kind of a quality squad player, not necessarily somebody who's going to go into the first level because the I know obviously injuries and suspensions and all that, but those three I think will be starting for us for most of the games. I think. Which three? Uh, Brown, McGregor, and Christie. Yeah, I mean, well, this is a thing, and Scott Brown, obviously, God, God bless him, but he uh, he's going to play less games next season. You've got to imagine. We well, that's the thing. Sorry, Ken. That's, that's the thing. Warren said they wanted to build build his team around Scott Brown. I mean, but the way. He, you know, talking about n- not feeling sentimental about Alex Lustig, I think there's a danger that we end up doing that with with Brown. It, if he's if he's performing, you know, if he's performing great in training and all that sort of thing, then you know that's what's going to get him picked. But if there's other people playing better than him, they should play ahead of him. He shouldn't just play because he's the captain, because he's Scott Brown and he was tenacious and all this sort of thing. It's whoever's got the be- who's in the best run of form football wise, that's who that's who should play. I think the tumble thing, just to go back to the tumble thing, I think it was a farce, a total farce the whole thing. I think both clubs embarrassed themselves. I think Motherwell looking back on it, I think you know did Mother will know something? Did they know that there was something up with them? And that's why they were so public about, you know, how much the the money meant to them and all that sort of thing. I think that was po- possibly a wee bit of a, a wee bit of gamesmanship from them um, that they maybe suspected that there was something wrong. We maybe knew that he would have to have some sort of surgery in the future, um, and we're trying to pull a fast one to get to get the money because obviously it was a huge amount of money. I think Celtic done the right thing in the end in terms of they wanted to they wanted to put him through the surgery themselves, and they they still tried to you know at least make it clear that they still wanted the player but in the end they wished them the best of luck and and yeah good good luck to them I, personally I don't know if they will go back in for him I kind of think Celtic will move on now I don't think they'll want to deal with Turnbull and Motherwell again um, in that, in that circumstance maybe on another maybe on another player in the future possibly I'm not saying they're never going to sign another player from Motherwell again but I just think the whole thing was a total farce and they lost control of the situation I don't think they'll be so quick to go back into that Keza what do you think if Turnbull returns from injury starts playing the same kind of form he had last season um, but it depends on what we do if we then go and buy an arm midfielder to replace and jam then there's not really a room for him so again it'd have to be maybe if somebody is they're looking to offload somebody for Turnbull to take over but the way they're looking just now is unless they then keep in jam for another six months and it's kind of like get a bit of sale but then if you do that and you don't use him enough his value will start to deteriorate because he's not playing as much now so teams won't won't be as quick to put in bigger bids I think as well so probably now is the time maybe to cash in and jam if we don't see him as being a kind of integral part of the team going forward um, but uh, like Louis said, I think once once it's happened, I think that the way the mother will conduct themselves, I think Celtic will now. will chase you. And the the other big saga of the the summer, um, YTK, young Kieran Tierney. Um, here's what Neil Lennon had to say about that today. You know, our valuation of Kieran is is correct. You know, we can't um, we can't do anything about what clubs the clubs do in, in England. You know, 50 million for Wan Bissak is a is a lot of money. We feel that Kieran's a far more experienced and more rounded fullback at this juncture of his career. So he's an asset for us, and you know we do have a value of the player, and we rate the player very, very highly. So disrespectful, I would say, is the wrong word, but um, we're not going to be certainly pushed over in any negotiations. We're in a strong position on a lot of our assets in the team. Some of the players who have left here in the last few years have gone on to do alright in the Premier League so we think we know what we're doing in terms of developing players and do we believe that 
they can play in the English Premier League, of course, but we don't want them to play in the English Premier League. We want them to play here and in the Champions League for us. So, um, Neil Lennon um, very much sounds like he wants to get the, the, the true valuation of Kieran Tierney, if you will. What's our thinking there? Strong words from Neil. Really so. I mean, Tierney's tied down for, what is it, four or five years? So, we're not in a rush to, to get rid of him. He's a quality player. We're obviously wanting to do things. We're obviously wanting to try and get to 10 in a row. So, we want to do it with the best players we have. Do we need the money? Well, we don't seem to think so. We seem to have some money in reserves anyway. Um, the fact that they seem that they obviously he's kind of slightly comparing him to wan and that he's a more rounded left back, well then well, should our valuation not be in 50 million the same as him? Obviously different leagues take the state of that, so I think I think around about 25, 30, 30 million is not is right to do that, and um, and it's right to hold out. The, the other thing is kind of that I um, was mentioning earlier was the fact of there was always interest in Tierney um, so many clubs, maybe Munich and United were partly mentioned, but currently we only have one team bidding for him um, and it's Arsenal and I try to be a bit snidey with it and try and get him a wee bit in the cheap um, so yeah, it's, it's still a bit kind of, kind of uh, wondering how we believe he, well, we know he's this talented player but why do other clubs not seem to think so as well and why, why isn't it like a, a bidding war for him maybe yeah I, I would agree I mean I think he's he's definitely our, our best asset uh, if you are looking to sell I don't think anyone wants Tierney to go I think that the the valuation that the club have set of 25 million is possibly a little uh, a little low but there are factors that dictate that and those are the same factors that dictate why a player like wan Bissaka goes for 50 million in, in England just because of the way the market is it does feel like a total saga. I think that the club are quite right to hold out. I don't think that Tierney will go for anything less, like a penny less than £25 million straight up front with add-ons. And I suspect that it probably will come to that because I think Arsenal are in a situation right now where they don't have a big budget. They're trying to do business. They'll probably sell players as well because they've got a very small transfer budget. And I think that they've come so far with it and they're so persistent with it I don't think they'll get a player of Tierney's quality for that price in other markets like, and they, they can't afford to buy from other premiership teams or or those kind of markets because uh, they'll just be priced out of them so I think that <clears throat> they will find a way of getting it done and I suspect that if the valuation's met then he'll go and it's a bit sad I feel a bit sad about it I, want, I feel like I, I get that Lewis Capaldi song a lot more now when I think about Tierney going I understand it now I feel sad no, you rat. That's your thoughts in I'm not the rat. Not me. Um, right, I just want to say before I go on my little run here, um, uh, I'd yes. just like to caveat everything yes. with uh, by saying that um, you're going to embarrass yourself. So you KT uh, was my boy. I was there before any of you uh, really cared about him. Um, I said he was he was mine from the start. He's been brilliant. Um, but it's time to go just like in Cham it's time to go it's time to go yes because he wants to go now if Kieran, this this whole thing wouldn't be happening right now if Kieran Tierney wanted to stay and he clearly by all accounts he wants to go to Arsenal he wants he wants to move now only last year he signed a six six year contract Never heard of anybody sign a six year contract other than who's, oh well, Alan Pardew got like an eight year contract in Newcastle. But a six year plane contract, and at the time he said, if that doesn't say long term, I don't know what, what does. Um, and then a year later, because the rats left, is my gut feeling on it, he's chucked it and all. And I think probably the rats get a lot to do with it as well. I think he's. I guarantee he will have been in with his wee sly texts and all that, which I think is snaky as in. I think he's. These theoretical texts that you've made. I, up. No, 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 he said that, though. He said that. that like, even the players had, had said that, that he'd been in contact with him and had, had texted him and kept up to date with him since he'd left and things like that. He would have absolutely, his advice would have been to get yourself down to England, just like I'm doing. You know, that's that's where the, the big money is, that's where the top players get play. your Get your ass to Mars. No. What? 
just a just a really good reference frankly get um, get yourself get yourself down to England Um, it's where you should be playing your football not here and I think Kieran Tierney has decided yeah do you know what that's right I'm off Um, and if if a, if a player wants to leave I don't think you should ever I don't think there's ever any point in standing in their way just like if Incham wants to leave get them get the absolutely get the most amount of money you could possibly get but move them on get people I only want people playing for Celtic that want to play for Celtic now I'm not saying for a second that he's not a Celtic fan that he doesn't love the club and everything like that fair enough but you stand there in the corner with a megaphone and all this leading the fans you're one of us you stand in you, you, you know you stand in the stand and everything else you're a 22 year old guy who always preaches how humble he is and the fact that he still lives at home up the stair in his mum and dad's house and all that sort of stuff why at 22 when we're two he knows how important the 10 is to every single Celtic fan including him presumably then why at the age of 22 has he got to go and chase the money when he's just signed a six year contract he could leave still have three years on a contract so we're still going to get the same if not more amount of money for him at the age of 24 his value is not going to decrease if he keeps up the performances he's chucking it he's absolutely chucking it and I am more than happy if that is his attitude and he, and he wants to go move him on get him out it's a shame because because he, he, he's so good and I, I really do love the guy and I'm not trying to say for a second he's not a Celtic fan but see if you don't want to play for Celtic go move on I, I don't doubt Tierney's commitment to Celtic and I also think that if the valuation's not met by Arsenal or anyone else then he'll play and he'll give his all and it's not going to be like Boyata where he's not going to he's going to go on strike and try and force a move but I do think that transfer sagas like this don't happen unless the player wants to move because at first offer I presume he could have gone to anyone his agent anyone at the club and just gone I really don't want to go like shut this down like I don't want any part of it uh, and I'm pretty sure that it could, it could have been on social media I mean he, he, well, you know, if, he, if he really didn't want to go he could have he could have put something on social media or whatever else told the club look I'm not leaving I don't want to go because the club have said they don't want to sell him they don't need to sell him I don't think they need to sell him of course every player's got their price but I think Celtic I don't think they're daft I don't think Peter Lowell's daft I think they would and probably in their thinking they would think we signed them up to a six year contract we'll keep them for the ten and then we'll make our money and I think that would be best for all parties it would just like ideally it probably would have been best with a rat until he became a rat so I think it's time to go yeah I think that if the value <coughs> excuse me if the valuation's met then he'll go and if not he'll, he'll stay and he'll, he'll kind of give his all but I think that any elements of the fan uh, the, the fans that are holding out for the valuations met and then the sort of WWE tyranny comes out and says no thanks and fucking stunners Unai Emery or something like that it's not going to happen and it's better to perhaps just c- conceal yourself to the fact that it's happened and just consign yourself to the fact that it's happened uh, get the most money that you can invest the money in the squad um, get another left back because we now only have one kind of proper left back if you don't want to play Johnny Hayes who's not really a recognised left back uh, and move on and try and I don't want it to be like the Dembele situation where it's the day before the transfer window closes and it finally gets done and over the line and it's with a real bitter taste in everyone's mouth Uh, and that's I don't think anyone would want that for either the player or for us in a position with struggling to reinvest the money I think I might be wrong but I think England's window closes before ours so I think we'll definitely have ah, it goes before the window. first game of the season um, but the other thing I would say to you you could possibly just flip that flip that round um, you guys are saying that uh, if Tierney didn't want it it wouldn't be happening maybe he's looking at it as if the club didn't want it to happen you're saying as much as they've came out and said they'll be happy to keep him they've clearly said to Arsenal here's a price and take it maybe Tierney's looking at that and thinking 
I don't want to, I don't want to force myself on this team if they don't want me. What about so, that? Yeah, you're at. I think teams have. Yeah, pair of rats. It's probably the case of if Celt- if, the, if the value comes at 25 million and Celtic accept it, then okay, I'll move on. Um, if they value me that much that if I'm not going to get anywhere near that, then I'm not going anywhere. Because with Arsenal, it's it's a, again it's a tra- transfer saga. Where it's like drip feeding the the. the the bid first it's 15 then it's 17 18 with add ons they're kind of trying to get the number it doesn't seem like they're going to get to 25 they're still too far away from it I, I, I honestly refuse to believe that 25 is even the valuation I, it can't be like that's so that for me just seems so low I think we're we would we would shoot ourselves in the foot if we sold them for 25 million I think you should you shouldn't even be entertaining anything less than 35 million but like I mean Neil Lennon said in the press conference today about the boy who went from Crystal Palace to Man United for 50 million and alluded to the fact that Kieran Tierney is a better player than him at this stage in his career so if you're saying that Tierney's better than a boy who's just went for fifty million. Why are we taking half? I I I would be beyond gutted if we lost our best player like that for twenty five million. I think Kieran Tierney. And the thing is, in response to you, Bud, he just signed a six year contract. I mean, if that doesn't tell them that the club want him. Why did they offer him a six-year contract? I mean, that's not just covering your back in case somebody wants to buy him. Because it's six years. I mean, you could put in a buyout clause in his contract if that was the case. I just think it's this wouldn't be happening. This wouldn't be a thing right now if it wasn't for Kieran Tierney. I'm not going to use the RAT word yet. But it's coming. But he's a bit of a snake. Uh, I think that I think that Tierney knows how highly he's valued at the club by the support and by the hierarchy. But there is obviously some personal motivation. I think to garner the sort of fees that you're talking about, like 30, 35, 40 million, Tierney would have to excel in Europe and really put on a show in the Champions League, which, I mean, Celtic were getting turned over by big proper European teams the last couple of seasons in the group stage under the previous manager. Uh, I think that the amount of the one of the big things to factor in out with the transfer fee is the wages that Arsenal will probably be getting quite a comparatively cheap deal for Tierney in terms of his wages versus hypothetically you sign someone like Andy Robertson that's got Premiership and Champions League experience that's going to be proper deep six figure a week contract because that's what that market sits at now and they've been crippled by Mesut Ozil's contract uh, which has pretty much landed them where they are to have a player like Tierney <clears throat> like what's Tierney on at the moment must be 25-ish I would have thought a week they can easily be offering him treble that and that's life changing money uh, I was also going to say as well that one of the other motivations Tierney's been plagued by injuries and there was talk with his, with his hip injuries and his pelvic injuries that it was even comparisons to the injury that Andy Murray had that was going to retire him so perhaps Tierney has looked at his career in a slightly different light maybe it doesn't look like I don't know maybe he thinks that if injuries get the better of him he's maybe not got as long a career as he would think he has and if there's an opportunity to make this money just now while he can because what if in a year's time it is like a very serious career threatening injury and he never took the move and he's not really set you know but in the, and the thing as well Celtic on the other hand will be looking at the same thing well, we've got a player who was out. homegrown we can cash in now for the £25 million, and that's a £25 million pound profit we've got in a player who we could probably lose for maybe six months at a time or a year at a time the other thing as well is would, would he pass the medical at Arsenal we don't know if that would happen I mean I, I, I think it was maybe Martin possibly who said in the group chat that he'd only played nine games in 2019 is that right? Yeah. Um, which is obviously pretty staggering. And from a, from a club's point of view, they probably think, hold on, we can get £25 million for a player who's injured all the time. I get that. I just think, like as you, as you say, that is maybe that's possibly how he's looking at it. From the, the fact that maybe his career's not going to be as long, he's not going to have as long at the top. But 
he'll never be able to admit that until after his career. So when it comes to him leaving and he puts up his big emotional Instagram post, he's going to have to say the the chance to go play in England is too good to turn down, and that is not going to be acceptable. To, well, I, personally, I don't find that acceptable because he's meant to be a die-hard Celtic fan, and we're too too away from doing the ten. And do you know the other thing is that see if we don't do it and we lose the league next season, and the rat left and the likes of KT left on his pretty much his own accord. They are going to be shat on, man. People are going to absolutely... The anger will be directed at them to a certain extent as well. You might be right, but that's nonsense. If the club get £25, £30 million pounds for KT, it's on the club to then buy a left-back that replaces KT, which we know they can do, and others. We know we could use £25, £30 million But they're reacting to a situation... I think they're more reacting to something that there's not their own making. They're not going out and asking people to fucking bid for them. I mean, he's clearly he wants to go. I mean, they've rejected bids. I mean, I, I, I just don't see why Celtic would want to want to sell him, other than the fact that the player says that he wants to go. It's the and if he's going, is, it, is Arsenal really a big am- ambition? Like obviously, Stuart, you were saying that, that they've not got a big transfer budget anymore. They're possibly not going to be seen as kind of like title contenders now for quite a number of years. So you're, you're not going down there to win the league. You're going down there to play in the league, probably, and obviously the money. Um, but uh, pushing through a, a move to Arsenal, it's yeah, hu- huge a club, but a club that apparently are in the shithole right now. Um, and uh, I seen something on Twitter. I don't know if it's true, but supposedly five million pounds of the. The last offer was to do with Arsenal winning the league in the next four years, and that's how Celtic get get that five million. Cheeky bastards! Well, that's why that's, that's definitely not going to back. <laughs> but that, that it would maybe be different for me. I think if if you're going to go down to England, blah blah blah. If you go play for Liverpool or you play for Man City after the seasons that they've had and the coaches that you you would be playing for, then okay, because you're going to challenge for the league title and you're going to challenge for champ the, the ultimately trying to win the Champions League. But that's not what's happening here. It's Arsenal, as as you say. I mean, I've never forgiven them for the whole as Eduardo thing. I mean, they're scum. Wenger's a scum you know rat the chief rat that, that whole thing uh, that's soured Arsenal for me I've, I've hated them ever since I don't know I mean maybe KT doesn't remember that but I, I wouldn't be going for that reason alone diving cheating bastard <laughs> um, aye so Tierney I think we can all agree absolute hero <laughs> Celtic legend hopefully he stays but if not he's got all of our blessings that's what I'm hearing from the panel uh, on the bolly bus <laughs> <laughs> bolly bus that works I like it um, and Cham we've talked briefly about him I just want a quick wee check in do we think you should stay is it a, a how, what's the least you would take from if you if we can get double the what we paid for him I would, I would take it because he's I'd, like I said earlier on there I think there's the three players we've had have played really well and they really work together um, and I don't really see him as a, a first starter now I think his comments were ill-advised. I think they're indicative of a player with a bad attitude. And I think that if he was bossing it week in, week out, and was uh, comfortably one of the best players in the in the league, then you could perhaps uh, understand where it's coming from. But Celtic have had players like Van Dijk, like Wanyama, that were levels above the competition in Scotland that you could really evidently see. And he's not in that league. And so... Uh, yeah, I think it's he's he's really perhaps got a miss, uh, a disproportionate opinion of his of his talents and of his abilities. And I think that if the club get an offer, like I would probably even say around nine ten, so you're doubling your money, then you should probably get rid of him because it's a player that obviously isn't motivated to be there. Could just cause trouble, could cause dressing room unrest, and it's not something that we need in such an important season. I'd 100% agree I think if we can double our money I'd piss my pants It'd be hilarious um, d- Nah um, d- The only thing I was going to say was Did he sign his new Because he obviously signed a new contract last season Did he sign that Was that after Dembele had left? It would be 
Yeah. yeah, so it would have been after them because I'm just thinking. I wonder if it was surely Celtic would have, wouldn't have gotten themselves in the same situation, but then they could have because of the manager, um, where they kind of gave them the assurances maybe that Dembele had, like sign the deal, and then if a big put, if a big team comes in for you, we'll let you go. Type maybe. thing. I mean, and then is 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 that what's happening? Does he have? I mean, I don't think those assurances. Ass, 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 I can't say that word. That, that assurances. Thing. I don't think they should ever really be given. Like we will sell you if X team comes in. But after the way he's talking, get him out. Get him out. He's another rat like Boyata. You know, I I would have no doubts that he would pull a Boyata stunt if there was a team like. Really wanting him right now, he would refuse to play for us. He's that type of that type of character, and he's been he's been absolute pish the most most of the time. With you know, Ronnie Dyla had a great Dundee United game, and Chams had a couple of good games. It doesn't make him a baller. Come a on, lot, a lot of judgments after one interview there, Louis. But um, I do I speak mean, perfect French. I knew exactly what I meant. Ah, okay, I got the context. Uh, but Stuart, I think said it perfectly. Like as you said, he had some outstanding performances last season but they were few and far between see if he had been one of our best players last season then he said the league maybe isn't challenging me as much as I would like fair enough but he was shite last season it was a overall it was a poor season he is I, I think it's very obvious to see he's a quality player because when he is when he's at his best he is magnificent um, and hopefully we can the fact that Porto supposedly it was about 15 million they were offering you would hope we could maybe still get that or more, but yeah. And the, and the other thing, you don't. I don't really care about the fact he wants to leave from a going for a ten in a row point of view, because I don't think he cares anyway. I don't think he really gets how quite important that is for us. Like how you know, ultimately that is pretty much everything that we could achieve. You know what I mean? I don't think he gets that, so I don't care about the fact he wants to jump ship. Like for him it's just another season. That's why it makes it all the worse when homegrown players do it. I think the other thing as well is um his agent's obviously behind it with him and it says look like to get your because obviously he's signed a new contract, he's tied in for a couple of years, so he's like to get out of here you're gonna to have to say something to kind of get the club annoyed the only thing as well is to see how the valuation back in the summer was 15 I don't think we'll probably get above 10 because other clubs are now looking you've got a player he's unhappy so you can't really bargain too much because if you don't take bids and you, you're stuck with him are you going to be playing him or are you happy for him to sit in the reserves and well, then shit all the money Oh, we've got the contract, yeah. but then do you want somebody £22,000 playing in the development squad most of the season? Yeah. Or else cash him in for 10 instead of 15 It frees up the wages. It also gets you a fee and gets somebody else in who would actually want to beat the club instead of just being a prima donna. I think ultimately, though, it's a case of if whatever our valuation is, and it might be that Celtic value him at £10 million, but it might be 15 whatever. Our, our team have decided that's his value. I think we should hold out for that because we've got him on a long-term contract. Ideally, you want players that want to play for you, but yeah, if we think he's worth 15 million, that's what we should hold out for. Yeah. That's me just throwing a figure uh, out there. But. but I mean, like I said, you don't want to then be holding out for that money, miss out on it, and still have him. And then he will start causing more risk because he'll be like, do you know what? If you, should have, you should have sold me, you were getting that money, which was still good money, maybe not up to the valuation, but still a good bit more than what they paid for him, so you're still making a profit. Then he'll be, he'll just probably cause even more unrest. But if you've got a three-year contract or however long you'll have left now, he doesn't want to waste the best years of his his playing career sitting not playing. Aye, so if he wants to get a move, he's still going to have to come and play. Well, for, well anyway, we're not for the summer, but yeah. we're we're arguing about nothing here. <laughs> um, so ten million is what we take for injury. Ten million, aye. Okay, okay. Um, so. We're actually going a wee bit longer than I thought, but FC, F- FC, FK Sarajevo, we talked a wee bit about the game. I just wanted to kind of cover off what you thought of the first leg, and then we'll talk about lineups for the, or predicted lineups for the next leg tomorrow, or tonight. I think it was a, it was a wee bit of a slow start, it was, clearly it was our first competitive game, first half, conditions did not help at all, it was absolutely chucking it down, you could see the pitch was cutting up quite quickly, so it was throughout the first half um, 
again, they started off the back three. Well, I believe they started off the back three, and then within about I think five ten minutes, they then changed it. So their game plan and the build up to it has changed within ten minutes. So I think some of the players will then find it a bit hard to kind of readjust because you tend to kind of three five one because you had um, Christie and. Was Johnson so Johnson. two of them are technically now have went from playing together behind the striker to then one of them having to play out left and then not going on so the kind of game plan changes a bit but they kind of got into the game Johnson scored a fantastic goal and then the second half because I think I felt in the first half as well that the attacking players weren't coming for the ball weren't looking for it they were kind of kind of hiding a wee bit they weren't none of them were what to put their head above there and say right give me the ball um, the only one who kind of slightly did something was Christy I felt he had a really good game uh, and in the second half they kind of they started to get the ball and uh, foot the ball more I think it, Sarajevo the quality then started to show the better quality and also the fitness we then started to show where, where di- the difference between the two of us um, and then I mean we got the three goals so um, you can always be happy with three away goals yeah I think the first half was very flat um, the second half obviously as you say we, we stepped up and did what we needed to do um, any standouts or were you? did you have another point you wanted to make Lee? You've no no I, I, sadly I didn't see uh, a great deal of the game just bloody talking. hell Lee. yeah no I know Rangers fan Lee. yeah what ah, I don't call myself Celtic fan I'm, I don't need to call myself it I just damn it live and breathe this club anyway um, no I didn't sadly get to see much of the game but um, I think from my point of view I think 3-1 is great because it gives us an opportunity to and I don't want this to sound like kind of disrespectful but we can hopefully see it more as a pre-season game and not maybe have to treat it with the same Concern is maybe we we would do in other um, other ties and other qualifying rounds. Hopefully, this should be a case of just getting through the game, getting game time into more players, and given the likes of given the likes of Johnson the chance to continue his great form that he's that he's had in pre season, give him the chance to to put on a bit of a show and, and build up his confidence because I think confidence is a massive part of getting through these rounds if you can go into the ties um, you know build up a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence I think it's it's, it's great for us ultimately but um, hopefully touch wood the, the second leg takes care of itself uh, One thing that no one's mentioned uh, is the fact that FK Sarajevo are a team of dirty bastards because they were trying to kick us off the park as well uh, it was pretty flat but it was quite professionally done as you say the quality kind of came through eventually there were a couple of good performances Johnson prior to his injury was great his goal was incredible uh, Lewis Morgan I thought was very good when he came on and looked very lively and then obviously Ball and Golly acquitted himself pretty well again up until he kind of came off injured but you would hope well yeah you would hope that tomorrow night will be treated more like a another pre-season game with an opportunity to rotate the squad a little bit and perhaps give people like Morgan an opportunity to see what he's about and if, if you give them a chance at a proper first team competitive football what they do I think a good thing as well would be give Griffiths a start yeah. he's come back and through pre-season he's kind of looked a bit sharp he's been scoring goals so I was surprised he didn't come on at all in the away game I thought he may have even got like the last 10-15 but I didn't see it put him on at all so I don't know if he's kind of saving him now for t- uh, tomorrow in, in the press conference Lennon still sort of alluded to the fact that he needs to be looking to get match fit and it's a still a fitness thing with Griffiths like he still looks like he's he's obviously got some of the goals he scored in pre-season he's obviously got great great technique great finisher all those things but it's always been fitness with him and you'd hope that that's something that he's working on so a game like uh, the second leg's perfect for that when you'd have to assume that Celtic are going to score anyway at Parkhead so he should be in, in about that and, and goals are obviously good for confidence too yeah, um, I just I was going to point out Mikey Johnson. I thought it was actually first class that that game. I think this um, might be his season. So I, I think 
this will be his chance. We'll be given more games. I think. I think he'll. I think he'll be ahead of Sinclair for quite a bit this season. I think he has had a few games through pre-season. Started last. I mean, started Sarajevo. You wouldn't really have thought of that. Um, but he obviously had a, a kind of a tough learning curve last year when he was obviously <coughs> kind of thrown under the bus against Rangers. Yeah. Um, but unfairly done so I yep. so but that might make him grow as a as a lad now so hopefully that will and we'll now see see the actual the real Johnson and what he can do. I think I think his goal he took his goal so well. It looked like a it looked like a, a player who was the main man for the team. Like it looked like a match winner's goal. Um it didn't look like a, a youth player who's trying to break into the team. He really looked like he. And he's, I think his overall play has looked like that. He looks like a player full of confidence who really believes in his ability and sees himself as being one of the one of the starters, one of the best players in the team. It's, it's fantastic. Yep, and we've not even really mentioned the goals because they were all outstanding. I mean, Mikey Johnson, I see, he just looked like a boss. Yeah. Um, Eddie was so composed, absolute striker's yeah. finish. Um, and then Sink. Yeah, his <laughs> back heel. was bold. It was bold. It was bold. <laughs> bold as brass. Um, but yeah, no, hopefully, uh, hopefully a big season from him and Henderson. Henderson. I really, really like Henderson. Um, so hopefully the two of them, I think the two of them are really the youth players you know other than obviously Dembele and Okofix but I think they're a wee bit further they're f- a wee bit further away I think they'll play I don't know 10, I, 10 games 15 games maybe over the piece but I can't see them playing more than that um, maybe next year is their season but I think from a breakthrough not, not even a break but trying to establish yourself in the first team I think Henderson and, and Johnson are, are it for the, for the coming season and we also had um, Bitwan playing. How did we think he did centre back? Yeah, he's he's one of the deadwood. Get him, get him, get him away. I, I suspect that uh, I, I do kind of agree with that mentality that it's mad that he's still about. But <clears throat> if you have Simunovic, if you have Ayer, if you have Julian, and then you have Beaton who can play centre half, I don't think it would be anyone's first choice to play centre half he's basically just like a utility player so it's quite helpful having someone like that around but it's, I don't I never feel that comfortable seeing him playing at centre half and you'd have to assume that you know he would be fourth choice out of, out of what we have I still like an hour to come in and make him fifth choice to be honest <laughs> Right, that, that, that's, just what, that's just what I want to take this wee discussion, oh, okay. this wee podcast that we're doing here. Jack Henry, right? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious, right? I think people really need to give the boy a bit of a break. Like, give him a chance. He played shite, yes, under the rat, and the rat asking him to, like, do, do crazy that. stuff that clearly isn't in his game. There, there is a player there and I think just like Jozo looked really good at the end of the season and was you know what is, what was basically Billy McNeil re- reincarnated that then maybe a bit far but well, he was not for one game one of the um, best players for that from for, for that period of time and that was all probably down to Neil Lennon and the way that he's instructed them to play I think if going by that evidence Who's to say that Lennon couldn't do the same with Jack Henry? I, I just think I don't think it's ever going to be allowed to happen though until people give him a break. Like he's a Celtic player, and yet people shit on him all the time. So Neil Lennon's some sort of centre back whisperer. You're saying he can? Yeah. Get... But then Henry didn't appear at any time in, in pre season, has he? Yeah, but well, so I, 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 that's on because he's a centre back is ahead of him. Yeah, but maybe he's just shaking it. I think people just need to give him a chance. I think there's a player there. I just I feel unco- I've always felt uncomfortable when Celtic sign players. They don't really give them a chance, and then they 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 mess up their careers for for years. I think give the boy a decent. If he if he's not good enough after playing so many games, and Neil Lennon really has a chance to play him, see what he's all about, then fair enough. But I just I just feel as if everybody has been so quick to basically berate that boy he still plays for us he still pulls on a Celtic jersey why, do, why don't we at least give him the opportunity 
I think that is a player there potentially I don't think it would have ever been in anyone's plans for Jack Hendry to come in and be in the team when he was and not not only that but be like quite integral at that point because we had we were so light for bodies and so he was forced to play at a level of competition that he wouldn't necessarily have been thrown into uh, and as you say the, the style of play that they were playing were uh, you know, trying to play out from the back and trying to be quite clever with the ball. I do feel, however, though, that you to I, I, I agree with you that it's not really fair for people to shit on him, but there must be seeing something in training as well that makes him fifth choice behind you know a defensive midfielder playing in centre half. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that because you're not seeing him in squads week in, week out. He's still there training and he's obviously not training well enough. Otherwise, perhaps with a fresh start with Lennon coming in and go, all right, well, it's a new regime, we'll, we'll give you a go sort of thing. I think that I, I always had this feeling with him that he might be one of those players that you move on and then they come good. And perhaps the club would benefit from loaning him instead of just trying to get him off the books and trying to sell him. And then that way you can properly gauge what his level is I would also feel comfortable loaning him out to like a Scottish team so that you can see him and it did hire the world a good uh, and then it's a good barometer of, of where he's at if you sent him down to a championship team or if he signs for Wolves as uh, as the as the rumour goes uh, he's probably not going to play so give him to a mother will give him to Kilmarnock somewhere like that see how he gets on and then if, he, if there is a glimmer of a player in there then you can bring him back in but for the time being there must be something that he's either not showing technically or in terms of application and training that has got him where he is yeah definitely because I mean he hasn't I don't think he's appeared in any pre-season game and there was even one of the games where they played one team in the first half and another team in the second half so that's four centre half you're using I think at that point we only had two three so if he doesn't even get a, a game there then he's definitely really not shown anything that Lennon can, can even see the potential of a, a player in there so uh, I think he sadly is going we shall see yes so um, Sarajevo upcoming uh, as we've said we would hope we're through it's 3-1 um, nothing's guaranteed but what are we thinking for lineups? Are we doing it basically as a run out to give some of the youngsters a go? Um, we do have a few injuries, so Mikey Johnson, his hip strain, we'll count him in out. Schwed's got a groin issue. Uh, Bayo, I think, is unfit as well. Bolly, supposedly, as we said, is fit, even though he rolled his ankle the other day. Um, just start for the back. Tell us, tell us a bit what you do. Uh, ben and goals, I. Uh uh, right back or centre back? I think he'd probably play a back, back three uh, okay. again. Okay. Um, so I think Ayer, Yozo, and no, I don't think Julian will play. Who would the other one be? Better on I think it probably will be. And then, and then I think he'll, and then I think he'll play Ball and Golly, Forrest on the other side, Brown. Maybe Ewan Henderson and Cal McGregor. And then um uh, and then uh, I think he might play Sinclair. I yeah, I think it'll be a strong team. I don't I don't think yes, okay we're three one. I don't think you should be I think the the youngsters can be on the bench, bring them on if we get a couple of goals. But please don't, please don't put in like this podcast like a, a B rated lineup. <laughs> you know, don't put on the dross. Don't put on, put the, on, don't put on the new guy. No, no. <laughs> we'll see the other thing as well is there's no game this Saturday coming or the Saturday after, so it's not like you're playing two games a week. So you play, and then you only what. Three, three weeks away from the start of the season so you possibly want to protect I think he'll make a couple of changes I don't think he's going to make widespread changes um, I think he might change the one, mid, the one midfield I feel he'll play Griffiths up top I think he'll start with Griffiths um, and I think he probably might play Morgan off of off of uh, Griffiths if, obviously, if Johnson was fit I think Johnson would have started um, I, don't, I don't know if McGregor would start I think it might be Henderson instead of McGregor Um I wouldn't be surprised if he goes a back four and he has actually Ralston. He plays Ralston as right back. 
ball and go to the left and just has either eye unusual in the middle because um, there is the kind of safety net that you do have a two goal advantage and three away goals that you should be and you're at home you should be strong enough even with having Ralston at right back who might not be strong enough but with the players around them and the, court, the, the opposition you're against it could still work for me to play I feel like uh, the thing that you keep hearing from Lennon is that he's talking about getting minutes in players' legs so I don't think it's so much a case of like or we'll give Dembele a run out for example I think it's more the first his first 11 and his first squad like his main squad getting them minutes I think he probably will play with a four and play Ralston because you know you would you would hope that Parkhead I mean that team aren't they, they aren't going to come and attack you really it'll be set pieces that would be their main sort of threat I think that Julien will play he played at the weekend Again, Lennon's been very clear that he's the he's first choice. He's he's going to be the man. So you would want to get a partnership going with him and Ayer as quickly as possible, and they need to get competitive games to do that. Uh, so I think that those two will be in. I'm not sure if at the moment if Bolingoli's our only proper left back that if it's if he's borderline, maybe it's not worth the risk. Maybe we'll play Hayes at left back. Again, not ideal, not something that would be tremendously exciting, but it's just not really worth the risk um, I kind of agree I think Brown will play I think there's an opportunity to rest McGregor given how much football he had last season and played with Scotland and <clears throat> not had as much time to recover as some mm. of the other players and I rate Ewan Henderson really highly <coughs> Excuse me. so I think that Henderson might be in uh, with Christie again getting more, more time for him given that he didn't play much towards the end of last season I think Forrest will play in the right if Shred's not fit and I, I'm not. I don't know what you think about Sinclair's future. Do you think that Sinclair will move on? Because if Mikey Johnson's going to potentially be the first choice left wing, if that's going to be his position, it's a lot of money to have tied up in Sinclair and wages at his stage. He's also, I mean, his contribution is is often kind of like belittled, but his goals and assists they kind of speak for themselves but he's a very frustrating player to watch and if Morgan has shown that he does have something to contribute perhaps he could be your second choice on that side so what do you do with Sinclair in that case? I think the fact that they triggered that last season it would mean that they could then sell him for something yeah, rather than losing for nothing it it's small so, it so that I think it'll, be, it'll be Morgan or Sinclair and then I agree that I think Griffiths will start but uh, Sinclair's an interesting one I think so I, I agree with you. See, I would be inclined to keep Sinclair because I think you've, you've all, you're already losing experience yeah. in the players that have left. And I think having someone who has a bit old... I think the young players need mentors and they need winners that are at the club and they know how to do it. And Sinclair definitely is in that bracket. I, mean, I don't see him as being a, a real kind of leader that much. But I'd hope that behind the scenes he would maybe be different. But it's maybe his public persona isn't quite the same. I would actually go as far as to say that I think Sinclair's a bit of a shite bag, so I think it's really unlikely right. that he's a leader. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that whenever you saw him, his first season was brilliant, and he was obviously like, I'm, I'm the big gun coming in here, like I've played at a much higher level than this, I've got all my tricks and blah blah blah. And then I've watched him at the Champions League like against like clubs like PSG, and he's like, he just freezes up, he doesn't quite know what to do. And for all that he does have this habit of chipping in really important goals and lots of assists there is a lot of times when you want him to be the man and he just looks like he's hiding so I suspect that he's maybe not that big a character or a bigger leader but I do agree that he's got loads of experience and having been a part of such a successful period in the club's history having players like him that have been there and done it especially with regards to like winning trebles the cup competitions the consistency and the determination to just not have an off day on those cup games and win regardless Mm. that mentality is important to spread through the team to the younger players for the likes of Morgan that haven't been there that have been out on loan or that have been fringe players and if they're wanting to come and step up then having that experience is great. I think he's a fantastic role model as well off the pitch because he clearly keeps himself in great shape I think he always he just I, I think Okay, his form's a bit patchy, but I think he's a model professional, and I think that's something that we also need as well. I mean, with all these rats infiltrating, we need the pure of the pure of Sinclair. But the one man that you didn't mention there, I mean, talk about Wales, Arzani. Oh, yeah. 
Now, Arzani was... He's left, left-sided, isn't he? Arzani came with such a huge Fantastic. reputation in terms of how he'd done at the World Cup, and I think in terms of Australian football, he's heralded as the biggest, brightest prospect that they have. It's, it was a shame that it didn't happen for him and, and he got that, that injury in his, on his debut. But, I mean... From all accounts, he's had reassurances from Lennon that he's part of the plans and everything like that. I think, a bit of a dark horse, but I think he might turn out to be one of the players of the really season. players of the season. I I think he might be a real standout. And you've got him, Shved, obviously Forrest, Mickey Johnson. They're, they're, fair enough, those four are probably... Then you've got Morgan. But having those players, having the likes of Scott Sinclair as a backup to those players even for two seasons, why not? I, I think, why not? I, w- I wouldn't push them out the door. If someone comes along at, off on a transfer fee and you factor in the fact that you can get rid of them from the wage bill, yeah, OK, it probably makes a lot of financial sense. But in terms of building a football squad... I think you want to, you want to keep him around. Yeah. I think that's just a big point. No, he's on around forty thousand pounds a week. Um, was our highest earner? I don't know if he still is, but um, that's a lot of money for Celtic if we're not going to play him a lot. Um, on the other hand, as you see, we're losing a lot of old heads. So do we want that experience? And also, we were talking just earlier about running KT into the ground. So if that, even if this is Mikey Johnson's season. Do we want them playing 66 games this season and 66 games next season? So you do probably want somebody that's going to come in and supplement that with 20 games or whatever to kind of take a wee bit of pressure off Mikey, assuming he's as good as he looks. I don't think Mikey Johnson would be strong enough to play 60 games. I think, not injury prone, but I think he's a type of player that might pick up niggles here and there and it might keep him out weeks at a time. So I don't think he'll do like a Cal McGregor and play 60 games uh, in his first season. I also, also say as well, have you, have you dropped your other love of your life as well? I haven't heard Tam mentioned once. Well, it comes I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> the big build up <laughs> for next week. Where's my number 10? <laughs> Can, well, you just better pick your team and then we'll get to that. All right, Kieran. Pick your team, pal. Can I pick it all together? Um, like Ralston right back. Okay. Um, okay. That was Louis doing Ayer, the picking. All right, okay. Ayer and uh, Yozo. Wait, Paul and Golly left. Um, McGregor, Henderson, and Christy in the middle with Morgan on the left, Forrest on the right, and Griffiths up top. Cool. And Stuart, did you get through all of yours? I think so, yeah. Cool. I think I, I probably agree with that. I'd, I don't know if I'd like. I'd maybe give Morgan a wee run out. Um, As would we all. Yep. Yeah, I'm just I'm just tuning it over. Do you have Sinclair, who's a bit more reliable? The fact the defence could be shaky. Stuart makes a good co- point about just risking Bolly when he is our only actual left back other than KT who's not fit just now yeah, I mean, you've, you can, you'll, always, you'll have Eddie and Sinclair on the bench and a couple of others so that if, if for some reason for, why are um, we playing them at left back here well I just mean you were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Sinclair playing um, Johnny Hayes there for left back uh, I think it'll be 5-0 five 5-0 nil. Five nil. I think it'll be 5-0 and they'll get at least a man sent off in the first half because I think once another goal goes in I think they'll just start hacking us because they're gone yeah, I mean, well then they kind of get away with a lot of hacking. Ah, well, because it's a weak ref. Um, so it depends on whether we have a strong or weak ref tomorrow. Will the world determine how it goes? I mean, if they can kind of get away with quite a number, quite a few kind of crunching tackles, then it might not be quite a high scoring game because it's not consistent enough and strong enough. But if he's quite strong and then like first tackle goes in and, he, and the ref's strong and says right, I have no more or else and with a card it might pull him back a little bit and then I think we'll just run right over him I do, I do feel we'll score four or five goals tomorrow well, and again, I don't want to I wanna, don't want to dim that enthusiasm but there's a few things I think take, we need to take into account and um, the Patreon had a preview podcast which you can listen to uh, if you're a Patreon member um, but the, we had a, a Bosnian journalist on um, and he just brought up a couple of wee points so he reminded me that um, they actually got a draw against Atalanta, uh, Atalanta um, last season Ah, but that was at home That was in Italy oh, Was it? Yeah Then it scaled yeah. down <laughs> Like 8-0 after that But they still went to Italy and got a draw um, And the other thing is he called out 
that the right back was a weakness. So they they're aware of that. They know that Ralston's the weakness. They're for playing them. But if we're back we, three, we then we don't. Ahead of ourselves. I know, but then the fact that we went and scored three goals away at home in a very poor conditions, bad pitch, then nice sunny evening in Glasgow, lovely pitch, Supposedly lovely in tomorrow. Yeah, a wee bit. I was still just glistening a little bit. Lovely hybrid pitch, all, all oh, nicely oh, regrown yeah. again. I think it's perfectly set up for us to play some really nice football, and I do believe we'll be four or five. What's, does anyone know what's happening? I should have googled this, but um, the pitch, you know, there's a, that whole disease chat before. Is that sorted now? Do we know? Right, so that's what the rats are in for on the squad, there, and they're just taking a sort of all that stuff. Uh, I think that again, I think it it'll be quite comfortable. I think it could be three or four. The it's all well and good, Sarajevo targeting our right back or our lack of our lack thereof. But they didn't really set up to attack. They were very much a counter attacking team and set pieces, and that was kind of it. And I just don't see that being as much of an issue. I think Celtic will have a lot more of the ball. I think the conditions were a big part of it as well. Last week the pitch was horrendous in the weather, so I think it'll be fine. Louis, any predictions for the score tomorrow? Uh, I think it'll be a comfortable four 0 so we'll FK them. Sorry. What was that? <laughs> I said we'll How long you do that, that, that plan for a while there, That's been you? in the back pocket for about five minutes. I've just Jesus been building up to get it So, Tam Rogic. Aye, right. Come on, we need to talk about this. I'm hoping for a bit more sense from, from you guys. I've listened to what the celebrities have got to say on the Patreon um, and I'm quite disgusted to be honest with you Disgusted? Disgusted um, Tam Rogic is football ability wise he is one of if not the best player at the club his feet are unrivaled there's no one got more skill on their feet no one's got a better touch than him no one is better on the half turn than him no one has an eye for a pass like him no one has scored the goals that he's scored in the most pivotal of moments as well um, he is absolutely one of the best players in the team and in and, and the league and he from an attacking midfield point of view um, I don't see anybody better than him and this idea that you know and don't get me wrong I know that he's he's no come back for the World Cup ha 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 he's injured all the time ha 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 he can't last 90 minutes when well, actually he's done it quite a few times it's it's bullshit to think that he's not good enough like how many players in their careers have had one bad season because of niggling injuries and they've not been able to kick on um, I think people need to give them a bit more you know a bit more of a chance and remember all I mean we wouldn't have had that treble moment against Aberdeen if it wasn't for him I think he scored so many massive goals for us Okay, you could look at does he do it in Europe well, yeah okay maybe he doesn't do it in Europe maybe he's just not at that level yet but um, I think this idea that Tam is suddenly shite and should be moved on is just absolutely ludicrous I really think it's just madness I think uh, I love Tom Rogic I think he's a proper proper match winner I think if as as happened a lot last season when it felt like you were just sort of banging your head against the wall and that you need someone to pull something from somewhere to win a game to sneak a 1-0 or whatever it is I know Rogic wasn't really that player last season but he has been for us in the past and I, I would be very disappointed if he was to be moved on I think about the goals that he scored like imagine how you must feel as an Aberdeen player and you look and you see that he's playing and you think about all the times that he scored against you or at Ibrox or all these big goals and I think that yes there are players that work harder in that team and are fitter but I do agree with you that there's probably not many players that are better with the ball at their feet and uh, and it would be a, a real loss and, and the whole reason why we watch football is because it's enjoyable we want to be entertained and he is the most entertaining he's an absolute joy to watch when he plays football and when he's playing you know fully fit and on form he's the most beautiful player to watch that's what we need. We need more of those players. We don't. We don't want just like 
like robots. Like I want to be entertained. I want to enjoy what I'm watching. Tam Logic's absolutely all of that, and he needs a bit more support rather than just I shite. He's injured all the time. Give the guy a chance. He also had to overseas tournaments last season in amongst spells of injury so it was very hard for him to get going or get any proper fitness back in him and perhaps that is that is one of the problems for Australasian players and travelling back for friendlies it's not like oh, I've got two games at Hamden or in Europe and back it's like 24 hours worth of travelling there and back in the space of a week and it takes it out of you and yeah I'm willing to to give Tam a pass for last season to be honest I just hope he gets a long a long well, he's going to get a long rest now over the summer um, and I hope they give him a wee bit more extra time for him to actually recover fully because <clears throat> I'm a few guys really, I actually love him I think he is an absolute phenomenal player for us um, just at times the way he just plays with the ball the way, he hold, the, way the one thing I quite like over the last year or two is the way he's now become so strong over the ball when he gets the ball his feet he's able to kind of almost cover it around from the players and nobody can get it off him and it gives him the chance to kind of turn the players and then start moving away and kind of counter forward um, it's just the consistency of the, of the injuries is just the one that's kind of killed him this season um, it's just kind of like he comes back a couple of games and he gets an injury he's out for weeks at a time travel and all that it's just it's just one of those things but hopefully he's, like, he's mentally strong to, to come back from it Um and come back to us, and I mean, again, that's another player to kind of choose from. And so you can look at all these players, and you're kind of thinking, we actually are doing really well with our squad. It's just right back. Once we did, once we get a right back, we're, you know, we're not complete, but the jigsaw kind of put comes together a lot better, and you then start feeling a lot more comfortable. Um, it's just try to keep all these players fit. That's the problem. There's too many attacking players that are just too injury prone, and that's the problem. But yeah, but I think what you say about right back is that I think I'm happy with every other position. So once we get a right back, it doesn't mean we stop. We could still do with another solid centre back. I think we could improve goalkeeper. I'm happy with Bain, but I think we could, you know, if we're talking about Europe, we could probably have a better goalkeeper. But right back's the only position right now where you're looking and thinking, no, not good enough. Need better. Um, so I, I, a. There was a couple of wee questions from Twitter and then I was going to wrap it up unless you guys have got any any other points you want to make. Although on Tam Rogic, I did just want to ask because again, I'm, I'm very similar. I agree with basically everything you said, Louis. He's, he's amazing. Um, but the rumours were a £9 million bid was going to come in for him. Or that, that, that was a rumour. £9, £10 million. Pounds. You think that's... That was, that was somebody bamming up a journalist. That never happened, did it? I mean, well, but I'm that was a couple of weeks ago, and then that that never came in. I think that was that was nonsense. I'm giving you a theoretical, though. No, you don't take it. You don't take the money. He, he's one of your best attacking players. Why would you sell him for nine million? That'd be that'd be mad. You buy a pure minted right back, mate. Nah. Anyone else? Ten million. Time over, Evan. Hi, Tam over everything. To be honest, I I don't think it's a funny one because I'm not really sure where. Tom Rogic would go like I think that playing for a club of Celtic stature is a is probably the right level for Tom Rogic being one of the best players at Celtic is probably his level because of his attributes because of the way he plays I think in, if he went down to the Premiership for example that, that, that sort of languid style of play isn't really tolerated unless you're like one of the best best players in the world and the best players in the world don't have a languid style of play mm to go to Russia or somewhere or if he wants to go to like China and for money but why would you he doesn't need to do that at this stage of his career uh, I think that 10 million would be a little shy of, of my valuation of him it's quite funny when you think about the fact that in Cham it was 15 million and Tierney's 25 million and you think that Tierney is probably our best player so there's only 10 million between them and you'd put Rogic below in Cham it's, it's a yeah, funny one isn't it's it mad. Yeah. it doesn't make sense to me no, I, I totally agree. Yeah, but there's stuff like age and stuff like that coming into that. Um, but Twitter questions or Twitter que- I, was, I had something else to say, and I've completely forgotten because I've destroyed my mind with alcohol. But uh, 
appreciate aye to our questions. Why not? We are. It's, it's going long, Kieran, but I, there's a couple of there's a couple of questions. Exactly. People have been kind enough to send questions in. So what you have plenty of podcasts. We need to get our time out there. Oh yes, yes, yes. So. Um, Gastro Celtic, he's asking about KT. He's got a working theory that KT should be the Scottish Philip Lamb. Um, he should be Scott Brown's successor. Uh, and then he's pointed out that since we pushed for Celtic to get a sporting director and that kind of happened, he should push to make this happen too. Uh, KT stays, emulates Lamb, trophies and all. Do you think KT could slot into a kind of Scott Brown position? He could he could play there at Arsenal. Who knows? We'll, we'll find out next season. <laughs> you dirty rat bastard, Geza. As in you mean in the midfield? Right, and uh, kind of holding midfielder. Nah, I think he's better at the left back. I think he gets forward. Um, I think he takes on players better than that when there's a wee bit more space in the wings but as in midfield you can get kind of crowded out sometimes uh, the other thing is as well he is very one footed so I think playing in the centre is quite tough for a fair player um, he, I mean he can't do nothing at really at all he's right foot I've watched a couple of times and can't even cross a ball so he's probably better suited to being on the left side I think he's good enough that he can we've seen that he's been able to slot in at centre back we've seen that he's been able to play it right back um, I think he could play the role but I think you're absolutely right I think he's such a good uh, left back that that's where he should it's, it's the same scenario with McGregor well, anytime McGregor's a utility player but we used to hate when he was it didn't do it very often but whenever he was a left back he was just totally nullified from the game and just he couldn't even perform on the left side so I think some players are kind of better suited to where they are yeah, I think I think left back is Tierney's best position I think if he was going to have some drastic role change uh, as his career progressed at Arsenal um, I could see him doing more like a Bale sort of move where Bale started as a left back and then moved further and further up just because Tierney's so strong from an attacking perspective but he's so switched on defensively that I, I think that there's no, no real demand for that um, so now cool. um, couple of player of the year style questions half hour hoops um, You've seen one game, player of the year predictions. Uh, he's given us three that we can have in the mix. Uh, San Fran Celtic has suggested that Ayer will be player of the year, and if you disagree, you're a shite bag. Discuss. Uh, and King has 67 agrees with that. He's definitely going to be a contender, although he hopes it will be Lee Griffith. So, player of the year from the one or half a game, if you're Louis and not a real Celtic fan that you've watched so far this season. I think it might be that £7 million right back we sign when he comes in. I think it'll be an absolute solid, fantastic right back we'll get, and I think he'll be player of the year. The player of the year will continue to be Kyle McGregor because he's brilliant, but Mikey Johnson's obviously put his head above the parapet a wee bit. And then I also have it on good knowledge that Shved's supposed to be the real deal, but I'd like to get a better look at him before I pin those colours to the mast. Hibou Kawasi. <laughs> A wee question about him coming up, I think, actually, if I've written it down. It's, it's on the computer, I don't know why I had to write it down. I think you'd have to say, if you're just going by the games already, I think you'd have to say Young Johnson. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Going by the games, I would say Johnson. Uh, I think the big man's right there, Sam Fran. It will be Ayer, Chris Ayer. Man's a fucking, he's a monster. <laughs> He is. I love big. him. Best right back we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, is probably the best right back we've got, and um, Christie as well. I think Christie's a shout. He can stay fit. What a player! What I mean, a player! I mean, I'm only kind of joking about Kwasi. I think Kwasi. I think this is going to be the big man season. Well, all cap sixty seven. Um, oh Jesus, are you? Is that's that your account? Account? I, think. That's I genuinely account. think a midfield of Kwasi. That's my stalking account. <laughs> 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 Moe moments Quasi, <laughs> uh, Christie and McGregor um, Sitting should be a starting midfield next year <laughs> Sorry, see those bars again Quasi, Christie and McGregor uh, None of them were Tam So that's incorrect <laughs> Tamless um, I think uh, I Quasi should be replacing uh, Scott Brown you mean like a phased, a phased? No, no, immediate, right now. immediate, right now, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just move them upstairs, and uh, yeah, that's it. Aye. 
he's, he's a weird one, Kwasi. He did, he did look good. I think he's a boss, man. I, I honestly think he's going to be the real deal. We just need to... We've just had to be a bit patient with him. But again, I think a type of player who Neil Lennon will get the best out of. I think he's a... I think he could prove to be a kind of Neil Lennon type of player. Um you know, if he wants someone who can kind of sit deeper and, you know, break up play and that sort of thing, but also a player who has an eye for a pass, because I think he's got a, I think he's got a good range of passing, it's just he, obviously, he's still not had time to really show what he can do, but I honestly think, like, I remember, Kouassi's best game was the game, was it, was it Man City that he played and he was a more offensive player? Who was it? He played a game in Europe when he played uh, further forward, um, and he was like, pre- like he was pressing things from the front, and he actually done really, really well that game, uh, which is obviously different to his, you know, is his what we've been told is he's more of a defensive midfielder. Um, but he's definitely one this year that I really, really hope. Again, a bit like Hendry, again, a player who's probably been written off by most. But I think we deserve to give him a chance and let's see what he can do. He is a bit like a forgotten man. Like, you, you, when you go through the squad, you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot about him. Because, again, was it, it was the same... It wasn't was it the same game as Ozani? It was the same week that they both just like yeah. Just gone. That's my worry with, with Lennon's comments about how there's still you know there's still players. His squad's still too big and they have to be moved on. I kind of look at it and I'm like, you know, okay, unless he's the scouting like players like Kawasi, yeah, but, but I, I personally I would keep him. I, I want to see him, but. You know how many p- players realistically is he going to chop out? It, it took uh, it took Rogic a wee while to get settled. He wasn't exactly didn't exactly hit the ground yeah. running, uh, and kwasi has been unlucky with injuries. And perhaps there will be more of a chance to, uh, as they try and perhaps manage Brown's minutes over the season. There will be, and if if in Cham goes as well, then maybe there is a place for him. I feel like we keep saying this about Brown, though. We keep saying this year it'll be phased out, but I, this year it'll be phased out. My thing, my worry is that that doesn't happen. It's it's not it's not a worry of mine, but I think that I don't think that he will play as little as some people perhaps allude that he will. I think that if he's fit enough and if he can get around the pitch, then he'll play. It's, it's particularly in the league as well. The the two old farm games at Ibrooks they looked like they passed him by, but then the two one game at Parkhead, the first half he was he was brilliant. In fact, much of the second half as well. So he does still have it, but it's just I, I just don't see Lennon putting him out to pasture. I think that he sees him as a really important figure. There's, there's also the the best pals element, yes. which which I think buys him buys him in a couple of seasons. Shite bout I Will grind all of you into dust I will smash your faces Sorry Stuart <laughs> Just You know We don't know each other very well But I will smash all of you I accept that, that I think it's fair Scott Brown He's building the team around Scott Brown Get used to it pal The next three to four seasons Scott Brown uh, It's more like building a wall around him So that people can't get into him You're Scott Brown for When he's so shite that's nonsense. That's a poor analogy. Um, but, you know, we need to get Tam Rogic to Australia at any means necessary. That's oh. all I'm saying, Louis. Oh. <laughs> that's, all, bleh, that's all I'm saying. I'm too tired. I'm a tired boy. Um, anyway, that has been pretty fantastic. Uh, do you guys have anything else you want to add? Is there any, anything we missed? Uh, no, no, really. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in in, uh, in the original uh, headquarters. HQ. And, yep. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the season ahead. And is, is there anything that you're you're looking for, Louis, that you could you could ask a question about? You want me to say it? I would love you to say it, Louis. <laughs> Where's my right back? <laughs> Where is my right back? Beautiful. Um, I should have ended on that but I'll say goodbye Kieran Harm thank you very much for having me a pleasure glad to be back looking forward to the next season the freight train back on form Louis McCaffrey God bless well, let's get Celtic rat free <laughs> aye you can move out <laughs> Stuart it's been a fantastic uh, original pod debut 
uh, original and best. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, the Onion Bag? Is that at The Onion Bag? Uh, yeah, I have a fantasy football podcast called The Onion Bag that is not currently operating but will be in the next couple of weeks starting up again. So if you play fantasy football, follow The Onion Bag F- at The Onion Bag FPL. That's it. There you go. Um, at the, the underscore quilter? Yes. Beautiful. At Kieran Haran at private account so it doesn't really matter uh, you can follow 90 Minute Cynic at 90 Minute Cynic Instagram Facebook Twitter um, if you want more of this content relentlessly podcast after podcast you're looking at like four or five podcasts a week probably you can sign up to patreon.com slash we will be on it don't you just, you're, 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 that's false economy there yeah. people think that they're going to get us you won't you'll get the Glad I. It'll be the it'll be the Diddy uh, cynics certainly. Yeah, but we are yeah. working class heroes. That's it. That's it exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, give it a go. Thanks very much for listening. We've been Ninety Minute Cynic. Where's my right back? <laughs> <laughs>